The city of Portland has terminated its lease with the Buffalo Wild Wings on 4th and Morrison. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Adams. Our Sydney Dorner spoke with the owner of that restaurant who says the city is not doing enough to keep downtown safe. Now, Sydney, tell us more about why this restaurant closed down. John, this Buffalo Wild Wings was downtown for almost 17 years with the city as their landlord. The owner, Ray Hutchinson, says the relationship went sour when they asked for better security in their parking garage after the 2020 protest. Portland has many sports bars, but Hutchinson says the Buffalo Wild Wings downtown was different, with lines out the door during big sporting events. Center of the universe on a Friday night with Blazer game, Saturday night, if we had a UFC fight, there'd be people lined up on the sidewalks looking in the windows. But the environment changed in 2020 when Hutchinson says the restaurant started dealing with property damage from protest. Not uncommon to turn on the news and see um, our sports bar in the background. Uh, I remember bonfires being lit in the intersection, and I, I'm looking at this going, that's our that's our a-frame signs that we have outside our restaurants that were used to kindle the, the fires. The danger trickled into the parking garage, also leased from the city of Portland. Our, our team members, car windows, windshields being smashed um, in the parking garage above us. Um, drug users uh, strewn throughout the uh, parking garage in the stairwells. Um, assaults. In June 2023, Hutchinson had enough and asked the city to beef up security. Two months later, the city closed the parking garage, resulting in plummeting sales for the downtown business. Hutchinson says that's when they stopped paying rent to the city. Put them in default and we stopped giving them rent. We accrued rent. Internally, we're, we set that money aside. We're not giving it to them until they straighten out the situation. On Easter Sunday, the city sent a memo to Buffalo Wild Wings informing them their relationship was done. The city says they tried to communicate with Buffalo Wild Wings about paying rent and finding solutions, but believe this separation was necessary. I was more committed to Portland than they were to me, so it's sad. Hutchinson says he's now focusing on his locations in the suburbs like Tualatin and Hazeldale that are doing well. As for the city, they hope to find a new business to rent the vacant space. John, back to you. All right, Sydney, thank you. Well, a small business is asking you to be on the lookout for their barbecue smoker. The owners of Southern Kitchen PDX say it was stolen Saturday morning from behind their food truck. So I immediately walked around the food truck looking to make sure someone wasn't playing a trick or anything. Well, right after making sure it was actually gone, Maurice Fine filed a police report. Surveillance video caught at least two people wheeling it off site. Fine hopes he can get the grill back in one piece. Not only is it critical to their business, he had it custom made. Move. I had a small grill, but I, you know, I wanted a bigger one so I could serve the community, serve the people. And so I sat down and I drawed it out, got with a welder, and he came and brought it to life. So it means a lot to me. The business also gives back by holding holiday food giveaways and making food baskets for the homeless. If you see the grill, don't buy it, report it to police. They also have a GoFundMe in the, the event they're not able to find the grill. We have the link to that on our website, kgw.com. Well, turning now to weather, another day of some on and off showers across the Portland area. Let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Any chance we might see some sun to start the work week, Joe? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, <laughs> to sum that up real quick to answer your question, uh, we are going to be seeing things gradually improve, but we have a, a kind of a weak system that's going to bring in uh, thick clouds. So unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing the eclipse in our area. You kind of have to travel uh, pretty far east along the Oregon-Idaho border is a better chance to see uh, the eclipse tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll zoom in right now. We'll still picking up little spotty showers here and there. Uh, it's been dry a good portion of the day, but we've also been seeing those showers at times, depending on where you're at. Uh, but going over the mountains, yeah, you've seen uh, several inches of new snow. Last check, about eight, nine inches of new snow in the last 24 hours outside Timberline Lodge. Right now, 55 degrees in downtown Portland with dry conditions out there. Rainfall amounts, I was telling you last night, were going to be relatively light, and that's pretty much 
what the case is. Just under a tenth of an inch of rain, although southwest Washington over in Kelso, you saw about two tenths of an inch of rain. So mainly dry Monday, but mostly cloudy skies. We're not going to be seeing much in terms of rainfall the next couple of days. Solar eclipse viewing, not great tomorrow morning. Again, you have to travel east to see much of it. And only we're going to be seeing 20 to 25 percent, even if it was on a clear day. But coming up in my detailed forecast, I'll talk more about that and let you know what you can expect to see heading into your work week. All right, Joe, thank you. Well, people near the Oregon Idaho border may have felt a shaking last night. The U.S. Geological Survey reports a magnitude 3.7 earthquake struck the region just after 630 in the evening. The epicenter is located in a remote part of Idaho, about five miles north of Smith's Ferry. An important reminder for Max riders, a stretch of the Max Blue Line is closed for the next week. The disruption will affect five stations between East 172nd Avenue and Civic Drive in Gresham. Shuttle buses will run every 15 minutes. Trains will also be slower between Civic Drive and the end of the line. This is so TriMet can make improvements to a rail crossing in the area. The disruption will last through next Saturday, April the 13th. A Haitian Taekwondo master is taking a group of students to compete in an Olympic qualifying event in the Dominican Republic this week. He hopes to shed some positive light on the island nation. Digital reporter Sabina Pierre has the story. Taekwondo, the way of foot and fist, a martial art form that only some develop a jabbing passion for. That includes one Portland Haitian man. Taekwondo is what I like. I enjoy doing Taekwondo. Meet Fuenal Oste. He's president of the Haitian Taekwondo Federation and the founder of the One Taekwondo Academy franchise across the metro area. Now he's kickstarting opportunities by leading a group of athletes representing Haiti to compete in an Olympic qualifying Taekwondo tournament. They have a lot of potential. There is a lot of potential. We are not sure if they're going to qualify, but I'm very convinced that every athlete will do their best and possibly uh, earn Haiti uh, that uh, qualification. Four of his students will be competing at the Pan American Qualification Tournament in the Dominican Republic on April 9th and 10th. For his students, they have been training and fighting for a chance like this for years. It's really exciting, you know. Um, also, a lot of nerves, of course, but I'm more excited than nervous. The last time Haiti qualified was in 2020 for the Tokyo Olympics. A technicality knocked them out of the competition. 2020 was the moment where Haiti athletes qualified at the Olympic game by Alia Shipman. That was the first time a Haitian Taekwondo athletes qualify on their ring to earn that spot to go to the Olympic game. But now they are in the ready position to try again for a spot in the games and give people a different perspective of Haiti. Haiti needs a lot of representation and especially with what's going on right now. I just want to somehow give back in a positive light. That's amid the current crisis where recent gang violence has set off due to changes in government. So all this chaos happening here, we want to do this positive light. So if we have good sports programs, we want to like bring out the positivity and things, just focus on the good stuff, not just like all the negative stuff that's happening. I had a chance to learn some moves from Master Funal Oste himself. Beautiful and helpful. They can be as young as uh, three years old and as old, well as young as 99 years old. My current Right now, my current athlete, he's 74 years old. And while not everyone can be an Olympic athlete, these four hope for a chance for Haiti to compete and shine on the world's biggest stage this summer in Paris. We want to hopefully we can make it to the Olympics, qualify and just like win. So we want to put Haiti back on the map. In Westland, Sabina Pierre, KGW News. We now know the latest Powerball winner bought their ticket right here in Portland. They now have a year to claim the fourth largest prize in the game's history at $1.3 billion, with a B, dollars. It's the eighth largest prize in U.S. lottery history. The drawing didn't happen until early this morning after being delayed more than three hours for technical difficulties. The last time someone in Oregon won the Powerball was in 2018 when a Salem man won $100. $50 million. We spoke with the Oregon Lottery about what this means. We're really excited that this happened here. Um, it's going to be life-changing money for whoever is holding this ticket. 
The winner has yet to come forward, so check your tickets. You may be the big winner.